Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're going to be checking out a video. We're going to be reacting to it called my experience living in the UK compared to USA. As always, there will be a link to the original video in the description section down below. And the original channel is right here called Four Between. So uh, definitely go check out their channel. I'm going to go ahead and hit subscribe. You guys should probably do that too. They got 476 subscribers. Let's help them get to a thousand, right? They're like a little over halfway there. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and check it out and see some, uh, comparisons to, to the United States and the UK, right? Of course, there's going to be some stuff different, like, you know, words, names of, of stuff that people use, uh, you know, the houses, right? They're made out of like brick and stuff instead of wood, stuff like that, right? But we're gonna find out. Now I'm sure you guys already know my wife Dana is originally from America. She actually moved over here on a UK spouse visa just over a year ago now. We made a couple of videos about it. Okay. Now these videos address how she obtained her spouse visa but she does get a lot of messages from our followers and people that find the video, private messages asking her a few more questions, you know, about the ins and outs of being an expat, what expat life is all about. So we've decided to dive a little bit deeper into the subject, call it a kind of side project, if you will. Now awesome. So, um, definitely go check that, uh, this original channel out. If, if you're interested in seeing how all that goes and the videos that he was just talking about, we're still going to be making four between content. But Dana wanted to address some of these questions, basically, just to help others, explain to others exactly what life is like, an American living in the UK. All right. So here it goes. Here is the very first episode of Dana's Expat Chat. Have fun. guys, welcome to Dana's Expat Chat. On this episode, I just want to talk a bit about my experience moving from the US to the UK and how it all went for me. So the first thing that I didn't really expect when moving here is how kind of lonely and alienated you might start to feel. So when I got here, I imagined because I had my visa, I had finished everything, we had done all the legal stuff, that everything would just be like, cool, and then you start. But after I arrived, um, I definitely f felt almost illegal <laughs> for a bit. So that was definitely odd to deal with. Um, I think in I think in general, though, any any time that you would go to another country or anything like that, you would definitely have those same experiences because it's not what you're used to. There's no one there that you know, and all that kind of stuff. If if you're if you're wanting like you know in person like people to people like in real life kind of interactions, then that definitely would be limiting at first. You'd have to go out and try to make new friends and all that kind of stuff. General, it's easy as well to feel a bit lonely because at the end of the day, you're not from here, so things are new to you, and the people around you don't necessarily have the same life experiences as you. So right. it's easy to feel lonely. Um, obviously, I had an amazing support system. You know, Chris has helped me so much, and my friends here. But there were times that I just was like, man, I wish I was home and with people that knew exactly what I was talking about. One thing though is is it's probably nicer nowadays though you know with Zoom and and with the online video chat kind of stuff you know now if you go back like twenty years or so I think that situation you know loneliness and and being isolated would would certainly be a lot worse so like the modern digital age is probably helping a little bit with that um so that is something that I kind of didn't expect when I came here there are days and times that I forget and I'm just like oh, I just want to be able to call my mom at this time when I want to and I have to remember that you know, time, you zone. time zone difference I say that not to scare you at all um, I've definitely felt super welcomed here just the other day even I was at the grocery store and I had to ask a question about something that I was buying because um, I didn't understand it and the guy was super super nice and he was super welcoming asked me where I was from we had a nice little conversation so uh, people aren't rude at all it's just sometimes you might feel lonely because the things that you're accustomed to right. aren't there anymore. so the time zone thing like right now it's 4 30 here UK is like five hours ahead of me, so it would be 9.30 at night in the UK. So like if, if 
if I was living there or trying to call somebody over there, I would have to remember to do it before now. You know what I mean? Because right now would be five hours different over there. So another thing that's slightly different is work. I remember putting my resume together, handing it out, trying to get jobs when I first got here. And the qualifications that I have in the US are different. They don't have a direct correlation. So basically I graduated from high school and then went straight to working. But most people, a lot of people at least, go to college afterwards in the US, but the college in the UK is something entirely different. So I think our college mm. is their university, essentially. When I There is people here that call college university for sure. But uh, yeah, I think college and university does kind of mean the same thing. It's just two different words for it. I was writing things down on my resume. It wasn't correlating to what I wanted to say about myself. <laughs> At the end of the day, if you just go in there and you're charismatic, you're friendly, um, you know you know what you're talking about, you'll get the job kind of thing, even if your qualifications don't match up per se. Um, just kind of go in with confidence. That definitely worked for me to get a job and I'm sure it'll work for you. A All right. big one is money. So when I got here, obviously I had savings and things from the money thing so so here if you go to buy something here in the united states and and it, and then the state tax is different depending on what state you're in but in indiana it's seven percent right so if you buy something that's say hypothetically ten dollars when you get to the checkout it's not going to be ten dollars it's going to be ten dollars and seventy cents because of the the you know seven percent is added afterwards so if you buy a hundred dollars worth of stuff you're going to actually pay a hundred and seven dollars Whereas over there, it's already factored in. So if something, you know, says ten dollars or ten pounds, I guess it would be, um, you. That's what you're paying. Like they already figured out the tax, which makes more sense to me. It makes, it makes it a lot easier because a lot of times you have to, fit, you know, if you're on a limited budget and you're trying to get the most that you can for the money you have, you got to always remember, like, okay, well, I got to keep a couple dollars, you know. So if I go to the store forty dollars, I got to be like, okay, well, I got to limit it to like thirty eight. $37 or whatever, you know, to make sure I have enough money to pay for the tax at the end. That's definitely a difference, but I think it would be actually better in the UK because you don't have to worry about not having enough to cover the tax at the end. The US, I got here, obviously I had savings and things from the US in US dollars. And when I arrived, I needed to not change it all over, but have a sufficient amount here. Yeah. Um, so I had to get a UK bank account and convert I had the money to over. Get a unique tax reference number, which is like a social security number, kind of. Um, and there were lots of things that you had to get. Coming over, I was thinking, oh, well, it'd be super easy to get a bank account because I have a really good credit score and that surely will show for something, but it doesn't. There's yeah, the credit score in the United States isn't anywhere else. Like, that's just the United States thing. And I actually found that out in the comment section on one of the videos that I reacted to. So that's definitely something that's going to be different. You know, if you have good credit here, it doesn't matter over there. If you have bad credit here, it doesn't matter over there. They do. Every country does its own different system, uh, you know, when it comes to that kind of thing. Score, And that surely will show for something. But it doesn't. There's that correlation again isn't really there. It didn't mean anything here. So yeah. it was it was hard to kind of start over, start from the beginning when I knew I had built up all this stuff. So I've had to do my US taxes as well and uh, figure out what the heck UK taxes are and all that stuff. Yeah. So that's definitely been a challenge to kind of figure that out, navigate all of that. It is not you know, the end of the world, you can get an accountant, all that stuff, but definitely something to think about. And I don't even have an accountant, guys. I just try to figure it out all out myself, and uh, sometimes I'm good at it, sometimes I'm not. <laughs> and I think the biggest one would be have patience with yourself. So everything seems to take a lot more time than you expect. Okay. Um, you need one thing to get another, to get another, to get another. You know, you, you're starting with nothing and you just, you need all of these things all at once. Yeah, but everything yeah. is taking so long. It actually took me a full year to get an NHS number. So I don't know yeah, what that is. Things can take a long time. 
What is NHS? Is that National Health Service? Is that what that stands for? Is that what she was talking about? Um, or no, she was talking about banking, not health, but I don't know. Um, so just kind of prepare for that. I think I, I myself thought, well, I'm here. I've got everything. You know, let's hit the ground running. <laughs> yeah, don't work that way, huh? I needed to be more patient and know that things would would take time and eventually they would get there and everything would come together. But when I first arrived, I just wanted it to already be there because I already had felt like I was fully established in another country. Why is it so hard to then establish myself again in this country? But my best advice that I would give to you is just be patient with yourself. You will get there. Just take it one step <laughs> at a time. Take a break. I wish so I wonder if uh, if if documents and stuff take longer in the UK. Like she's core, you know, of course starting completely over. Um, she don't have to start completely over in the United States. She's already had these documents for, you know, most of her life, I would assume. So she probably doesn't realize the actual time difference. Like over here, you know, say, you know, if you migrated here and you had to start fresh in the United States, you would have to get like a, 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 a visa, a green card or whatever, you know, you'd have to apply for your social security number and that would take an X amount of time. I wonder if the documents take about the same amount of time, you know, to fully get established like with that, or if it does take longer in the UK because they're more laid back, you know, everybody in the United States seems like they're in, it's just such a big hurry for everything. So, but then again, you know, I feel like a lot of our stuff gets put on the back burner and, and, you know, when the government wants money from me, they want it now, 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 yesterday, you know, uh, if the government owes you money, yeah, it might take a while. They, they don't care about paying us. <laughs> you know? So I don't know if that's uh, how her experience was here in the United States, but that's how I feel like it just takes a long time here too. So I don't know. There, just take it one step at a time, take a break. Uh, I wish someone would have said that to me because you know what? I bet Chris did say that to me. He probably said many times, just chill, you're doing a good job. But <laughs> it just doesn't feel like it when you just want to get to that point. I wonder what state she's from here. But you will get there, don't I, worry. I can't tell I, from her accent necessarily. I don't say any of this to scare you. Moving to the UK has been one of the best experiences I've ever had. I would tell anyone to move to another country. It is something unlike anything else. One day. Uh, it's a very cool experience to have. You learn so much about yourself, about people around you, about life in general. So absolutely, 100% move, move to another country if you can. <laughs> move, it's guys. It's <laughs> a great experience. If you like this kind of content, be sure to like this video and subscribe. See you next time. I already subscribed. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh... oh, I did hit like. And I subscribed. Yeah, that was very interesting. I wonder if what the comments are saying here. Yeah, that lonely feeling is what every expat feels no matter where they go and is part of the culture shock. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. Uh, what's almost harder is the reverse culture shock and the loneliness one feels when they go home. I've done videos on, on reverse culture shock, actually, reactions. Uh, if it's longer than a few weeks of rush visits with loved ones. Okay, yeah, so if you're home for longer than a few weeks. Because we have the expectation that all the continued mixed messages and misunderstandings and lack of pop culture reference knowledge, and that goes both ways, will be fixed. But it's not fixed. Not only that, but family and friends have an expectation that you will come back to them unchanged, and that is simply not true and not possible. Loneliness is a common thread among those who have moved into another culture. Ultimately, though, we are better for it. Good comment. Good comment. Um, yeah, so that pretty much about sums that up. Yeah. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, hit like, hit subscribe, jump over to their original channel, help them get to a uh, thousand subscribers. That would be cool. And, uh, yeah, share your experiences down below and you guys have a super fun, awesome day and I'll catch you in the next one. All right. Take care. Bye.